Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome! My name is Monica, and today we're doing yet another edition of the bi-weekly wishlist or washout. If you're new to my channel or if you've not seen the series before, what I do is every other Wednesday go through all the new makeup releases that I see on Instagram, and I decide if I'm going to be adding anything to my wishlist or if everything's a total washout. We're actually going to have a lot to talk about today. I don't know how long the video is going to be, but I did skip this video last week, technically, according to my schedule. This should have been last week's video on last Wednesday, but I ran into some scheduling problems, had to move some things around, so we're technically a week behind, but I'm going to try and do them <laughs> bi-weekly from here on out. So we got plenty to talk about. And also, I just was not having a great hair day today, so the, the beanie came out. The hair went into braids and the beanies came out. <laughs> I had the deep condition tonight and then like wash it tomorrow and I didn't want to do it today because the yeah, blah, blah, blah. Before we jump into the new releases, I have two quick updates and the first is that I fi so I was on the email update list for this product and I finally got it. This is the Fenty Cream Highlight and this is in the shade Fuego. It's the orange. I finally got it. So I am wearing a little bit of it today. I did put this on on top of my foundation and then I went over it with a an, an orange shadow from Juvia's Place just to kind of build it up and it looks so pretty. I can't wait to play with this more when I'm not doing a full face. Like if I'm just doing um, kind of like a no makeup makeup look, I really want to play more with this. I'm so excited that I finally got it. And the other update's a bit of a sad one. Uh, if anyone else really likes Lush, my favorite, favorite lotion of all time is from Lush, and it's the Karma Cream Lotion. It's, it smells delicious. It is, uh, what is it? Almond oil, patchouli, and orange oil. And it's literally, like, my favorite, favorite lotion ever. I got an email from Lush, and it was, like, their to be retired soon email, and I clicked it just to take a look, and I saw that they're, they're discontinuing my favorite lotion. <laughs> my best friend and I are, like, gutted because it's literally our favorite lotion so i place an online order i bought three of them <laughs> so i bought three of the tubs um i don't see my brain my makeup brain wants me to buy more <laughs> these are big tubs they'll last me a bit but then it's gonna be discontinued <laughs> so that makes me really sad so if you also liked this lotion i'd recommend picking up a tub because i don't know when it's gonna be discontinued if it's just like right now like they're no longer making anymore and so like one stock is gone it's gone I bought mine online, though, um, depending on your area, depending on how bad COVID is, uh, there are less lush stores open. I got emails about how you can, like, order online and pick up in store, too. Um, and I was also debating, because my boyfriend lives right next to a lush, and I kind of want to go pick up more. I don't, I'm don't. i going to hold myself back, but it is very sad to see that they're discontinuing, like, one of my all-time favorite products. With that out of the way, let's jump straight into these new releases. Alright, so I think the last episode that I filmed was right when the Pure and Raw Beauty Christie palette came out. I've seen some mixed reviews on the palette itself. It's a pretty palette, but I don't think, like, the fact that, the, like, the site crashed so badly, I don't think I'm actually going to be able to get the palette, like, anytime soon. And it's kind of shocking to already see that Pure is coming out with a new collection. Like, they literally just released that collab, like, three weeks ago. They didn't even give that collab like room to breathe you know um so this is the defense anti-pollution collection it has an eyeshadow palette for 34 dollars it has a overnight detox anti-pollution moisturizer for 34 dollars it has a matte matting spray matte matting a mattifying setting spray for 24 dollars and there's a black lemon mask for 28 dollars and then a liquid eyeliner for 19 dollars overall this collection, it's, it just seems like meh. I, I don't know what they're like aiming for here. This doesn't look like a summer palette. It doesn't look like a fall palette. And then the other products, like it, the only thing I can think about for summer is like that matte setting mist. That kind of makes sense for summer. But like, I don't know. I feel like this could have waited. Yeah, this could have waited. Actually, when I look at the palette, like it's okay. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna buy it. But I do like palettes that are cohesive, and then you can break them up into like trios, or you can get like kind of simple looks out of them, but then still mix it up and do different things. I kind of like that. So I like the idea that you can chop this palette up and play with it. But like I've got these shades, I'm not interested in this, and I do think it is a bit overpriced. So this actually looks kind of cute, but uh, I'm not gonna get it. But it is kind of adorable. This is Junco the Junko that did like that that one sponge they're coming out with a spongebob collection it's kind of cute i like it but it's well it's actually it's 24 dollars for four sponges and then a cleaner it's actually not 
too bad when you break it down by price. I mean, my favorite sponge is the dollar one from Shop Miss A, so I don't need any other sponges, but I kind of like the idea of this. It's adorable. <laughs> The price actually gets better when you look at discount codes, because I'm just seeing here Trend Mood has a discount code to get 20% off. That's a lot. And so I'm assuming a bunch of other influencers also have codes. So I think you can actually get it for a decent price. If you really like SpongeBob or you want to try the sponges, I think it's cute. But it is still gimmicky. <laughs> so this is something I'm actually kind of interested in, because I really liked the mascara from this line. And this is from Milk Makeup, and this is the Kush liquid eyeliner. I really like the Kush Eye the Cook Kush mascara. It is pretty expensive. I don't like spending too much money on mascaras, but when I see like higher end ones work really well, I get tempted, but I don't need them. But I really like this mascara and I'm because of that, I'm interested in the liner. I'm probably not going to buy it anytime soon, especially cuz I've barely been doing liner like at all. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'll challenge myself to do more liner like looks or actually use liquid liner but i'm not reaching for it <laughs> really so i'm not gonna buy this anytime soon but i'm assuming this is going to be part of their permanent collection i don't see why it wouldn't be i don't know why you'd have a limited edition liquid liner but you really can't know nowadays huh okay this sounds gross <laughs> so mac is coming out with a fix plus watermelon Is, is anyone really interested in that? I don't know, maybe it's just me and I really don't like fruity scented like sprays or mists. Ugh, I don't know, just I, I literally thought that. I saw this and I literally immediately went like... Mm. I gotta give it to them. It is summer, but do you want to spray summer all over your face? I don't... D d I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know who this is marketed to. Let me know down below how you feel about these specific like fruity sprays and if this is something that you're actually like into. Okay, so I don't really buy from Morphe. I don't promote Morphe, but I saw this palette and I'm like, what the hell? You know what this palette looks like? This palette looks like the Emily Noel palette that came out with Makeup Revolution. And that was a mm, palette, but like this, it looks like someone turned the saturation down on a palette. I'm sure people who are like really hoping for cool tones are happy to see this kind of palette, but like to me, I don't know. This obviously because it's a Morphe palette, it could be half the size and be the same thing. But yeah. And I personally don't see this working on a wide variety of skin tones. Excuse you. As I was saying, I don't see this working on a wide variety of skin tones because I see that top row and I'm like, that's only going to look good on people that are like as light as I am. So, uh, not interested in that. I think there's more coming out. I, I heard that they're coming out with a new line. Is it called Morphe 2? Where they're trying to do, like, the milk makeup and the Glossier thing where it's, like, light, like, no makeup makeup kind of stuff. None of it seems particularly interesting. Uh, and I, I'm obviously not going to buy it. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to do an update on this, but, okay. This is something I actually really recommend. Ooh, can we focus? So like I was saying, this is something I actually really recommend because I have a set like this and I am loving it. So the makeup eraser um, is coming out. So they've, they already have one little set and it's basically the peach, they call it the seven day makeup set. So it's seven small makeup erasers. Actually, you know what? Give me a second. I'm going to pull mine out to show you. So the set that I got was the peach set. So it's like seven... Um, small makeup erasers that you can use and the whole point is to use them for a week and then you can wash them at the end of the week um five of these i have used and already washed and they come out like i had makeup all over these things they're already out and then these two i still have not used yet so you can see they look practically the same after and i had a lot of makeup on when i used this um i did want to show that this is bigger than a miniature size so this was a miniature makeup eraser i got as a point perk at sephora and this is the mini so as you can see, if I overlay them, this one's just a little bit, I don't know if I can show it better. See, it's a bit bigger. So it's like, I don't know, what, 15, 10% bigger than this mini. Um, but this is enough for me to get my full face off, except for my eyes. I don't want to tug in my eyes too much, so I do use um, a micellar water there. But for the rest of my face, this gets everything off. So I used them all last week, one of these every day, and then I did my laundry today. I love these, and they're really helping me cut down on my makeup wipe using 
Now I brought this up because this is um, a new set. So this is the watermelon set. So I think it's going to be this pink color, the original color, and it's um, seven of them. This is $25. I paid $20 for this peach set on Sephora's website. So I don't know why one's $20, one's $25, but um, it comes with a really cute bag. I still have the cute peach bag. It's actually right behind my camera. This one comes in a watermelon bag and you get seven of the makeup erasers and I just think they're really good and I really like them and I'm I don't know if I'm gonna do a whole video. I'm gonna mention them in my skincare video that I'm gonna be doing in a few weeks, but I, I would really recommend um, this set because it's perfect. It's just what you need for just basically a week. I do laundry every week, so maybe if you do laundry a little bit less often, maybe you can get like two sets of these and then you'll have enough to use until you actually do laundry. But it's been helping me immensely cut down on my makeup wipe usage and I, I love them. So I would really recommend that. All right, so Kylie Skin is coming out with some more stuff. I, mm, I didn't, ooh, we didn't talk about Fenty Skin yet. We'll get there. But I don't recommend trying these celebrity skincare brands. I didn't, there's so many great affordable skincare options from reputable brands that already exist and they're cheap and they're accessible. I just, I don't want anyone to risk their skin from basically these money grabs because that's what they are at the end of the day their money grab is by celebrities and that includes the fenty skin all right so you know what i skipped down a ways um i want to talk about fenty skin next so fenty skin so fenty skin um again i don't really trust uh skincare coming from well a a celebrity brand and b a brand that particularly just focuses on makeup. I have read a long Twitter thread by um, someone who was sent the entire line, which it looks like there's a face wash, a toner, and a moisturizer. Um, and let's take a look at the prices. Yes, so the moisturizer is $35. Hmm. The toner serum is $28 and the cleanser is $25. Expensive stuff. <laughs> but, um, I did read a Twitter thread from someone who sent the whole line. Apparently every product is heavily fragranced, it's expensive, and it's not really going to work for everyone. I did see um, a quote from somewhere, um, I don't know if it was Rihanna herself or a representative from the brand, where basically they said that this was a one-size-fits-all for skincare. That's not true. There's no such thing as one size one size fits all for skincare. Like everyone's skin is different. Everyone's needs are different. So that rubbed me the wrong way. And I just I'm not gonna try this. I think it's expensive and I do think it is a money grab at this point. I think the Fenty like makeup line is incredible. I've tried many products that I absolutely adore. But it, the, when it comes to skincare, mm, mm. Also, as everyone else said, the packaging looks just like the Florence by Mills packaging, so I don't know. The colors are really pretty, but it looks way too much like the Florence by Mills packaging. You know, I keep forgetting House Labs is a thing. <laughs> um, so House Labs is coming out with eyeliner. Now this is something I would have expected like as one of their big first releases because Lady Gaga is known for that eccentric eyeliner heavy look. So like this should have been like one of their first releases. Look like pencil eyeliners and they're $18 each. Yeesh. Yeesh. Okay. I'll give it the benefit of the doubt and say that it's a sharpenable pencil so it'll last you a long time. But yeesh, that's expensive. And I like that they've got a, a variety. They've got a bunch of colors. Not as much color as I thought there would be, but there's color. And they've got interesting... Uh, varieties between which ones are matte versus which ones have like a more shimmery kind of finish. I'm not gonna be buying these because I don't need them. But what do you guys think? Honestly, I'm, I'm surprised it took them this long to come out with liner because I think this should have been probably one of their first releases. All right, so I'll just touch on this. I've talked about this before where I don't understand why sunglasses are such a, a big thing that's still promoted across like makeup pages. But I guess Desi Perkins has her own brand and their sunglasses. I think. Um, okay, so first of all, these are $60 and up. Am I the only one who doesn't spend a lot of money on sunglasses? Like I, so I, I am privileged in the point that I, my, my eyesight is fine. I do not need prescription glasses of any kind. Um, and I don't really treat my sunglasses the best. I always buy them for like less than $10 at Marshall's and they just live in my purse. I throw them in my purse. They just live there. Uh, I'm pretty rough with them. And I just, I don't know, I never felt the need to pay more than $10 for a pair of sunglasses. So whenever I see these sunglasses, uh, first they were like collabs with some influencers and now they're brands, where these are like 
sixty dollars and up. I mean, sure, they look pretty. I can get the same ones at Marshalls and like pay ten dollars. Like, I never, I just really don't understand like designer sunglasses. I, is it just a flex? I don't know. It's just, so yeah, no way. And no way are you gonna see me paying eighty five dollars for these shits. Like, no, <laughs> no. So this looks different. I kind of thought this. Can you focus on my face? So I scrolled by this really quickly at first and I thought it was a clear brow gel, but it's not. This is a mascara from L'Oreal. Hmm. So this says, a new evolution of mega lash volume that inflates and puffs up lashes, just like a hot air balloon, yet feels as light as air, suitable for all lash types. This is interesting. It looks like a clear mascara. I'm kind of like really interested in this. I mean, I don't know what the price is, but it is L'Oreal, so I'm assuming it's going to be a little bit more affordable than most. Oh, I lied. <laughs> I thought the bottle was see-through at first, and that's why I thought it was like either light pink or clear. That bottle is not see-through. I think it's pink. <laughs> Oopsie doodles. But um, I like the way that the brush looks. It's an interesting looking, just kind of standard brush, but I, I really want to try this mascara out. You know me and how much I like my affordable mascaras. Okay, so let's talk about One Size Beauty, because I think I had filmed my video right before the first release for One Size Beauty came out, which was the micellar water and the wipes. <laughs> so if you didn't know, Patrick Starr came out with his own brand called One Size Beauty, and the first release from this brand was these really big makeup wipes and uh, a micellar water in like a spray bottle. I've heard really mixed reviews. Some people like the micellar water. Um, I think was it Smoky Glow said that she tried it and it wasn't really the best. I've heard some people say they really like it. Um, and then the makeup wipes. I just talked about earlier how I'm trying to get away from using makeup wipes because they're not really best for the environment. Um, so I don't want to buy those. A, they're expensive and B, they're wasteful. I'm trying to get away from using those. Um, and also, isn't it a weird... I mean, I think he was trying to be different, but it is a weird move to start out your makeup company by releasing stuff to take off the makeup you haven't come out with yet. And I guess according to Twitter, I haven't seen this for myself, but I did hear that apparently some of the products weren't ready to be released yet, but they really had a date they wanted to launch the brand on. So they literally just pushed these up. And so the first releases were non-makeup. At that point, just push the release back. Like, <laughs> and, okay. Anyway, so that was the first release and it was underwhelming to say the least. Then we got this. So this is a palette, which excuse my French but what the fuck is this this is literally just a neutral palette with a pop of blue <laughs> neutral with a pop of blue and you you know Patrick Star is known for like these like dramatic gorgeous like eye looks and lashes I honestly thought like lashes were gonna be the first thing that come out but no it's this neutral with a pop of blue palette and a liner so yeah eyeshadow palette oh so there's liquid shadows for $22 which mm, nope uh, there's an eyeliner pen there's an eyeliner pencil okay so that's everything outside of the the wipes and the mist yeah uh, yeah I don't, uh, it's kind of going the complete left field of what i was expecting from this brand i feel like now the only thing i would actually be interested in trying would have been the the liner but again i'm not wearing liner uh, i think that that palette is really a letdown i don't know what do you guys think of this brand so far? Oh, here's another one. Wayne Goss. So, Wayne Goss. I'm on the fence about him. He's got some, like, decent videos. I, I'm not subscribed to his channel, but I watched a few of his videos. Some of them are decent. Others, I'm just like, mm. He had a really bad take about all the drama that happened a few weeks ago, particularly because of Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson. His video, he basically came out and said, yeah, the community is toxic. You guys should stop it. Stop being toxic. And I'm like, um, first of all, excuse you. <laughs> like, yeah, let's have this drama that was started by these two rich white men and let's have another rich white man come on and tell us it's all our fault. Anyway, I don't want to <laughs> get into too many semantics there, but I'm, I'm not a huge fan. And I know that he's a working makeup artist and he's got a lot of experience and he's coming out with his own brand. Um, I've never tried out any of his brushes because they're disgusting. His... his a few of his brush sets could pay off my student loans. That's all I'm going to say. It's it's disgusting. It really is. Um, and then the first few products to come out from his actual makeup line is uh, this eyeshadow palette and I think some eyeliners, which I have to say, 
This is a really standard run-of-the-mill eyeshadow palette. I like that there's actually a matte black in here. I see a lot of um, palettes that don't have a matte black. I feel like for, maybe not everyone, but I feel like for a lot of people, a matte black is a good stable staple color to have. Like for me, since I have black hair, I love using black in my brows, as liner, uh, in my hairline. Just, I feel like a matte black is awesome. And you don't see it in really in that many palettes. Um, as you tend to see more like dark browns, that you, people are kind of stay, straying away from putting in a good matte black into palettes. So I have to say, looking at this palette, it's a stable everyday palette for someone who just wants to do their makeup and like go. So I can see like the appeal of this palette. So now, saying all that, there is no way in hell this is $55 <laughs> worth of palette, you know? I mean, I'm not gonna buy anything. I think the eyeshadow pencils or, or the eyeshadow, the eyeliner pencils are a bit more reasonable at $14 each, but I don't think I'm gonna buy anything from this brand. So Huda Beauty is coming out with this, it's a single shade of highlighter, and someone else pointed out that this looks just, can we focus on the face? So Huda Beauty is coming out with a single shade of this new highlighter called the Nymph all over highlighting powder. This looks a lot like the Smashbox highlighter that came out, which I think it was Vlada? It was a collab, uh, well, which looked gorgeous. It looks just like that highlighter. <laughs> um, I'm not interested in buying this because how much is it? $55. dollars $55. If $55 for that Wayne Goss palette was extravagant, this, this, this should be illegal. <laughs> oh my god, why? Nope. Yeah, so not interested. I'm not gonna buy it. Nah. Okay, so I'm not buying anything from Too Faced. They've got a lot of shit, you know, that they're dealing with and that they've done. But I just need to take a second and appreciate this packaging. This packaging is freaking adorable. Can another brand please just steal this idea and come out with lashes like this? Because I love this packaging. Damn it. <laughs> not gonna buy it. But it's cute. Ooh, I want these. Okay, so this is from M Cosmetics. I've never actually tried anything from M Cosmetics. Okay, can someone clear, straighten something out for me down below? I've never bought from M Cosmetics. It's it's the brand owned by uh, ooh, Michelle Phan, right? I read somewhere that Michelle Phan was anti-vax. Is that true? Because if so, I don't want to. I don't want to be anywhere near this this brand but I don't know 100% if that's true is it true I hope it's not because uh, th this is actually the first thing I would actually want to buy from the brand these are um, serum blushes and look at these shades they look adorable the $25 that's a bit steep for a liquid blush but I really like these shades I really want the purple and the peach one mm. but again that is really going to be contingent upon whether or not Michelle Fauna's anti-vax because we dragged Kat Von D for being anti-vax among other things. So I feel like if, if she is, we need to keep that same energy. Which that would suck. I really enjoyed Michelle's earlier videos. Oh, that sounds gross. Okay. So the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask, I think I've tried a sample of and it's okay. Not enough for me to actually like buy it, but it's okay. They're coming out with a gummy bear flavor. Again, maybe I just don't like fruity things, but like this to me just sounds like <laughs> So I saw this picture and I was like, oh how cute is this packaging? Mm -hmm. Didn't realize at first it was Louboutin. Strike number one. Strike number two, <laughs> that price was $90. $90. What the <laughs> No. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I'm not saying a single release, honestly, for anything Louboutin makeup themed that has been positive. <laughs> yeah, just not. Nothing. Nothing in the... No. No. <laughs> I can't even like com complete sentences because no. No is a complete sentence. And that's what I'm going to be using here. No. <laughs> so this new ColourPop release... And it's called the Wild Nothing. The only thing that I've called out about that palette was like that one green shade. I don't need this palette. 
the bronzers and the blush yeah i've tried their face powder their face products before and they weren't the best for me anyway i love the packaging um i love the packaging and like the aesthetic it's like the desert i grew up in new mexico so i do really love that aesthetic but like uh, i'm not gonna use anything from this collection so no so Cover FX is coming out with uh, a new tinted moisturizer, which, cool, a nice luminous tinted moisturizer. There's only four shades. What the hell? What the hell? I can't, I probably can't even use this lightest shade, and how is four shades supposed to cover everyone? Yeah, sure. Do the tinted moisturizer argument and say that it's, it's supposed to be light cover so it can work for more people. Four shades isn't going to cut it, especially now. Just... What the hell were they thinking? Just four shades. It's $39. Screw that. So I was slightly tempted by this at first, but then I remembered how bad Wet n Wild's limited edition collections are, and I pulled back. This was the Wet n Wild uh, My Melody and Kuromi collab. The face palette looks adorable. I like the package, the packaging. I don't like double-ended brushes, so the brushes are just kind of like meh. The eyeshadow palettes look eh, but I think like the darker one would have been fun to play with. But like every single limited edition collection that I've tried, at least half the products are crap. And that's not something I'm gonna play with anymore. I'm not gonna play that lottery anymore, so just no. And we're gonna end on this. So this is from P. Louise, and this is the new palette. Uh, the packaging looks so freaking bulky, but the shades look gorgeous. I've never tried anything from P. Louise, even like their base that everyone has talked about. I I know I have these shades. I don't need this palette. I have these shades, but this looks really pretty. <laughs> oh, really pretty. Oh, and I lied. Let's talk about one more thing. I actually got tagged in this photo, and this is from Adept Cosmetics. They're coming out with some diamond topper shadows. And there's a green shade called ACD00. I mean, all of these shades look really pretty. I need to look into this. Because these look gorgeous. But particularly that green shade. Yo. I just like green and like that orange next to it. Halloween. It's August, so you know what that means. It's Halloween. <laughs> oh, I see. I, I honestly wish my light bulbs could do orange better. Because orange doesn't really look orange on these light bulbs. Which is kind of sad. Like... Let me see. Are you connected? Orange. So that's the orange. It's not really that orange. I wish it, it was just more pumpkin-y, you know? Anyway, back to the pink. But back to this. Yeah, so this looks really interesting. I've never tried anything from Adept Cosmetics, so I really want to look into this and look at their single shadow. I don't know. I, mean, I don't need more shadows. I've got plenty of shadows, but I really want to look into the brand and try them. All right, so that is everything for this edition of the Bee Wow. Yeah, I'm pretty on the fence. Well, I think it was mainly negative. Whatever. But let me know what you guys thought of everything down below. If there's anything that I missed that you want my opinions on, also let me know down below. And feel free to tag me on Instagram if you ever see anything you want me to talk about in the next episode. I love chatting with you guys there. And if you haven't already, I'll have my Instagram handles there. Here. Here. Somewhere. Thank you guys for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye. I've got so many split ends. I need to, like chop my hair again a big reason why my hair has also not been doing well is that all my layers grew out so like i'm just like prime triangle hair when it's not like perfectly styled which is why i just braided it i'm not i'll deal with the hair tomorrow